Well, Happy New Year to you. Today on The Boiling Point, we're going to be going inside this water tube rental boiler. Welcome to The Boiling Point. Thought we'd do something a little bit different. We are inside a 75,000 pound an hour water tube boiler. This is a 350 design and Stephen Taylor with us, the director of the rental division. I thought it'd be a great idea to just kind of get in here and walk you through a little bit about what happens inside the boiler room, talk a little bit about the, the tubes, the refractory, and talk a little bit about how the heat actually moves through uh, this furnace. So Stephen, welcome, always great to have you. First, we want to talk a little bit about the burner. Of course, this is a uh, Todd Lonox burner, if I'm saying that right, of course. Um, why don't you walk us through what happens here? Okay, you've got uh, two separate air patterns here. You got um, your outside air, secondary air comes out of here. Primary air comes through here and part of it comes through the diffuser itself. Gas comes through these uh, ports in these shoes, they call them. You notice they're all turned different directions. We turn those to get the flame positioned right, to get the zones right, to get the thermal knocks down, just to do things to get our, our NOx emissions as low as possible. And what happens, this air comes out here and it actually cuts through that gas. And when it cuts through, the gas is coming out like this, the air cuts across it and that's how we get the mix. That's how we get the, the combustion mix that we're looking for to get that proper combustion. Now this is a gas uh, as well as a number two Number two uh, oil, fuel oil. And, if, and if it's fuel oil, we'll have a nozzle that, that comes in from the, from the other side and the nozzle will sit right here. The tip will be like a half an inch in front of this diffuser. Um, so that's what all that's for. Okay. What size blower motor uh, on this? This one's got a 125 horsepower blower motor, so it's it's pushing a whole lot of air. Okay. So why don't we focus a little bit on the diffuser? Well, we have a couple different uh, diffusers here, Steve. Why don't we go through these? Um, yeah, this is pretty much the same style diffuser as, as what we have on the Todd burner. Um, you know, you've got your outside air and then inside air comes through here. Gas typically on this one will be here or they'll have spuds on the outside, but it's doing the same thing. You've got air coming through, cutting the gas, getting the, the mixture in that, that fa fashion. And these here are actually bent in a certain way so that when the air comes through, that air is Yeah, so swollen. making that air, air spin, when it cuts across that, that uh, gas, we want that air spinning to get that mixture we're looking for. We're just trying to roll it up and get it, get it to mix properly. Okay, this one is a Limpsfield diffuser, totally different. Completely different design, different technology, and, and this, the conventional burner, you're actually allowing or, or using the, the fire box, the fire tube, whatever, to, to do your combustion mixing. In, in the Limsfield design, they're actually using that as a premix. So they're mixing the air and the gas before it gets into the combustion chamber, where in this style, we're letting the combustion chamber itself do it. So it's a completely different technology, requires a little more air pressure, but you get a lot better combustion, a lot better fuel air mixture, fuel air, air ratio, it's just a lot better design. Okay, and basically the air is behind here. Uh, you get a little bit of back pressure, of course, and then it comes through and starts to swirl just with, just with the way these are bent. Yep, yep, sure does. Okay, all right, well let's move on to the front wall of the boiler. All right, so the first thing that I notice here, Stephen, is that I have a poured refractory, which is hard and a little bit softer, more blanket uh, type. Of yeah, this is, this is every, pretty much everybody in the rental industry does this, and the reason we do it, two different reasons. One, this reflects heat where this will absorb heat. You, mm -hmm. you, you have to have a hard refractory to finish the throat forming itself for the, for the, ref, uh, for the firing mechanism for the burner to, to get the flame shape and get everything right. But that's all the ref hard refractory we need. Then we need something to, one, lighten the load, two, not absorb heat to make the, the burner, the whole boiler system more efficient. So we use a light refractory. It's a module type. Uh, refractory, so it's it's all module stuffed in there. Doesn't weigh hardly anything. Holds up real well. Reflects heat. Doesn't absorb it. It just does a lot better job. And then these things are they're bouncing up down the road at 60, 70 miles an hour. So it, it takes that vibration. You don't have any issues with it at all. Okay. What type of temperatures do we get in here? We want to keep it below 2,500. Anything above 2,500, we start forming what they call thermal knocks. So it gets our emissions up. Mm -hmm. We'll have zones in here that are, that are going to reach 3,500. Mm -hmm. But with the mixing we're doing, bringing uh, flue gas recirculation in, by the time it gets back here towards the back, we'll be in that 2,500 range, and then it'll drop down from there. So that, that helps to keep that thermal knocks down as low as we can. Okay. 
Uh, going down to the, to the floor, if you will, that we have our mud drum that is along here, and there's a refractory that goes over top of that. All we're doing there is prote protecting the joint where the tube meets the drum itself. We don't want to have any excess heat there. That's the seal part of the, the pressure vessel. Same thing on the top. Mm -hmm. uh, it also seals uh, the, the, these ligaments here are going up there. They don't tie into the drum, so it seals, air seals to keep combustion air from going out uh, and short circuiting out through the stack. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about um, when you say seal, because um, when you're looking at the walls and the, and the tubes inside what you call the furnace, then everything is sealed. Yeah, it, this is the it, we, this technology came out you know 30 years ago and everybody has gone to it now and the reason being is, is emissions. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the old technology just had these tubes butted against one another, so you always had gaps in them and you would create CO because you'd short circuit between here and the stack and just unburnt gases go right out the stack, creating CO. Okay. Uh, so to make the boiler more efficient and, and to keep the emissions down, now they're seal welding ligaments to the tube itself and then when the uh, boiler is put together at the factory, we seal weld these ligaments together so it's a completely sealed furnace, no chance of combustion gases going out the stack and short circuiting on us. Okay, so now uh, six rows of tubes. Six rows of tubes, one inside that's sealed, one outside that's sealed, and then four intermediate uh, that where the gases turn and go back to, to get our heat transfer we're looking for. Okay, so our bottom, our sides um, are all sealed, but obviously this heat's got to go somewhere to get to those other tubes. So why don't we move to the back of the boiler? Okay. All right, so the first thing that I see when I get to the back of the, the wall, Stephen, is um, I see that there's some more blanket back here. Same, no refractory at all back here. No refractory at all back here. The same style that we have in the front wall. These are all modules pressed in here, and then they're, they have a spray put on them to seal them to keep them rigid. Uh, same design. Again, reflect heat, not absorb it, and make the, the boiler itself a lot lighter for moving up and down the road. Okay, so the burner's actually, of course, moving the heat uh, to the rear of the boiler. Um, did the flames touch touch these tubes? No, at all? we don't want them, we don't want them to touch that tube. But if you were standing here, you'd you'd be getting you'd have flames on your butt standing here where we are. So okay. it, it gets real close to the rear wall when we get this thing up to high fire. All right, so. Um, why don't you talk a little bit about the, the tangent tubes here? <clears throat> These are uh, the, the uh, rear wall tubes. Uh, they, they create a whole lot of heat transfer because, again, they're, they've got the, the fire, the, the hottest gases coming right against them. Uh, and, again, that's, that's twofold. One, to, to, to generate some more heating surface, to generate some more steam, and to try to keep as much heat as we can off that rear wall. You can see these things are staggered to keep that, that heat, the direct heat, off of that rear wall. Then we've got slots in here in between these tubes where they don't have these fins on them, and that allows for those flue gases to go around. And they're still hot gases. We're still in that, you know, 2,000 degree, 1,900 degree range when they hit this rear wall. So that those gases will turn, go up the sides, all the way to the front, and then turn and go out the stack, which is in the center and the very front of the boiler on the outside. All right, so the only other thing I guess to talk about is... Uh are in and are out. That's, That's it. <laughs> you have one way in and one way out. Yeah. And, and in part of our safety procedures uh, everywhere, we've got a guy outside the boiler that's sitting out there and his his sole job is to make sure he's a whole watch. Just make sure no nothing happens, nobody starts the boiler up, nothing while we're in here. So Even now. Even now. Especially now because I'm freaked out in here. <laughs> So that's one way in, one way out. It's not a good spot for a 300-pound guy to try to get in and out. Yeah. That doesn't work real well. Right, so right. We're, we're still slim, you know, even as old as we are. We're, we're still doing okay. Now, the, um, the actual cover on, on that, is it refractory or it, is it blanket? It's blanket as well and slides okay. in there, and it, 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 it does a good job for us. It makes a, makes a good seal. Okay. Well, there you have it. Uh, inside of a 75,000-pound-an-hour uh, rental uh, water tube boiler. And appreciate Stephen stopping by, as always, sharing the knowledge with us. And we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point. Well, we appreciate Stephen stopping by and talking to us a little bit about the inside of a water tube rental boiler. Make sure you like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and if you don't mind, share the videos and subscribe to that YouTube channel. We'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.